Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you so kind for being a part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. Welcome aboard, Michael Rudnan. How is Michael Rudnan doing? E2247 is in the house. Bridge MCP is in the house. Melanie Keelan from Barcelona, Spain is in the house. Paul Fleming from Atlanta, Georgia is in the house. AC Rodriguez, como estas mi hermano mío? They also have in the house. Anybody else that I need to call out? Right now, I'm scrolling up to the top. AV Cube, Fridge MCP, Melanie Keelan. I think everybody so far, Paul Flem, I think I've gotten everybody in the chat so far. Anyway, folks, we are going to have a great show for you today. Of course, of course. Finally, we got a speaker, but there's something about that speaker. That speaker is one of the guys who is a preeminent, preeminent. MAGA guy who is a constitutionalist that tried to get the election overturned. That's who he is. That's who he is. And that's who they put into power. Shiva Las Vegas is in the house. Welcome, Shiva Las Vegas. Welcome, Shiva Las Vegas. So, yeah, they came out. You want us to take a look at it? Let, let's go ahead and play that real, real quick. The guy, the Republicans have finally elected someone to speak in the house here we go and check him out there is now a speaker of the house of representatives congressman mike johnson won the gavel this afternoon 220 votes more than the 216 kevin mccarthy got back in january in fact johnson is the first to get every republican vote since john boehner in 2011 so who is he he is a staunch social and religious conservative from Louisiana in his fourth term in Congress. He's co-sponsored a 20-week abortion ban and voted for a national abortion ban. And he served on one of Donald Trump's impeachment defense teams. But what he is most known for is not just refusing to certify the 2020 election, but being the, quote, architect of the objections. As the New York Times reports, quote, in December 2020, Mr. Johnson collected signatures for a legal brief in support of a Texas lawsuit attempting to throw out the results of four battleground states won by Mr. Biden. The Supreme Court ultimately rejected that suit, but not before Mr. Johnson convinced more than 60 percent of House Republicans to sign on to the effort. He did so by telling them the initiative had been personally blessed by Mr. Trump and the former president was anxiously awaiting to see who in Congress would step up to the plate to defend him. That's reporting again from The New York Times. Last night, when a reporter asked about those efforts, Republicans surrounding Johnson booed that reporter and then laughed about it. Johnson, you helped lead the efforts to overturn the 2020 election results. Oh, God. Next question. Joining us now, NBC News senior Capitol Hill correspondent Garrett Hake and Punchbowl News co-founder and MSNBC political contributor Jake Sherman. So, Jake, I want to get this to you first, because when I had been talking to Ken Buck repeatedly about the speaker's race, one of the things he told me for Jim Jordan and Steve Scalise was that he wanted both of them to say that the election was not stolen, to certify that Joe Biden won the election. This guy, uh, Congressman Mike Johnson, and we see coming down the stairs right now, we might have to go listen to him, um, not only did not certify the election, but he was the architect of the objections. How did this come to be? Because politicians are not often intellectually consistent or honest. We, right. They're not consistent. In, they're inconsistent and dishonest. Yes, yes, yes. He claimed I couldn't vote for somebody who denied that Donald Trump lost the election, who denied that Joe Biden won the election. And when Buck had to vote, he voted for Johnson. He voted for the super MAGA guy. The MAGA has taken over the entire Republican Party. If the Democrats somehow lose to MAGA in 2024, they would have deserved to lose because these guys are a wrecking ball. And now we have a wrecking ball to run Congress. Let's see exactly what happens. Bleach, I heard when he said that. He said, he said, uh, his wife was on her knees for a long time and was exhausted. 
That has a lot of connotation, Brit. And I can imagine everybody there is saying, this religious guy is talking about his wife and her knees. I hear you, Brit. I hear you. It was funny. Welcome aboard, Lee Grant. Yes, Richard Roundtree, star of Shaft, the Shaft series, has died. I remember that's the first I saw the Shaft series, it, the first Shaft movie made in Panama. And uh, uh, when, I was, when I was in Panama, and they brought it to, to the theater out there and we all run to see the Shaft movie. It was amazing at that time. It was amazing at that time. I still love Richard Roundtree. He actually participated in a remake of uh, Shaft as well with uh, uh, what's his name? Who, who did the remake of Shaft? Absolutely. So uh, Bridge MCP says ACLU did agree with the DC case gag order is pause or order is pause. Mike C. OK, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Bracken Shira, let's go ahead and see who's on the call right now. Let's go ahead. Welcome to Politics Done Right. Who do I have the honor of speaking to? It's Ray from Third Ward. My third ward brother, Ray. How you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good. Um, actually, I was uh, I was just wanting to comment on that uh, that news you got about the speaker. Actually, yes. as I'm uh, visiting Louisiana, I, I caught wind of that on the news. Yes. And, um, and basically, you know, I, I feel like as a person who's been a lifelong Louisiana resident, that's uh -huh. not good for America because no, it's not. You know, we we definitely are not. You know. We're definitely a bastion of the right wing Bible belt down here. You know, I mean, Texas laws are messed up, but Louisiana laws are arguably more messed up in some regard. And um, even though we are somewhat of a purple state when it comes to state leadership, we still pretty much, you know, bask in that right wing red state type of mentality. Yeah. And um, yeah. I'm surprised I didn't know who this guy was up until this point, because he's kind of been up under the radar. I did hear he was a staunch conservative, but now you're saying he's a MAGA guy and all of that. Oh, I mean, he's a, he, yep. he actually was on the Trump impeachment defense. I mean, that's horrible, but it's, it's ironic to me that it took them this long to find him. He must've been one of those people that was quiet about it. I mean, I don't know. What, what do you think, Egberto? What, what do we, what do we have to look forward to now? I want to ask uh, your question on that. I think he's going to he's going to have to compromise because, first of all, you know that the defense industrial complex will take no crap from anybody. So therefore, Israel is going to get its due. Ukraine is going to get its due. They're going to raise a lot of hell about it. But ultimately speaking, uh, the military always gets the money that it wants. The only thing that we have to suffer about are any kind of policies that help people, whether it be student loans, whether it be Social Security, the drug deal that they made. They will try every way possible to cripple it. They'll try every way possible to roll it back. They can't right now. So we'll have the status quo. Good for the way the budget was written in the past two years. They can't can't do much for the money that has already been allocated, but it's going to be a difficult year 2024 while the election cycle is going on. And if Democrats are smart, they would go full progressive on as far as the needs of people, especially with inflation not yet mitigated, especially with people still not where they are with uh, health care. Health care is going to be a mess next year, especially with uh, with child care being rolled back because they can't get plans and all those those places have closed down that 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 were dependent on the spending from the covid the covid bill uh i mean there's so much for democrats to really campaign on and prove that the maga crowd is there to destroy the social fabric of the united states of america and if they don't make the case they don't deserve to win that's where i stand my brother ray I hear you on that, bro. And like, basically, I feel like if the Democrats can't figure out how to use this as a moment to regain power, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I am like, you know, basking at the idea of, of, you know, majority leader Hakeem Jeffries when it happens and it will happen. Look, but 
Ray, let me tell you something, Ray. Um, the, I, if I were a Democratic consultant, and I don't like the, the ivory Democratic consultants that we seem to use. If I were a Democratic consultant, I will, this would really be not only the 50 state campaign, this will be the campaign in every single precinct in America. Because I tell you what, there is the opportune time right now for the for for the for democratic policy for progressive policy to really touch on people's hearts minds and souls i have my little program at, on kpft that you listen to as well and you see how uh, our maga callers are pretty much right now because of reality or i mean we have a couple of them that are still really going off on hillary or going off on on trump but they are in check most of our large percentage of those calls that you hear are actually right wingers that we have actually put into. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. When you call, when others call and tell the story, these people are educated. So we have we are in control without too many realizing that we are in control. And I hope people run with it. And I'm not talking about the Democratic establishment because they are nothing more than Republican lights. I'm talking about progressives are ready to take the, the bull by the horns and run with it, brother. And that's what we need to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, again, on uh, local politics, while we do have uh, that uh while we do have that coming up, as far as representation, Sheila Jackson Lee has been a great uh, representative in the Congress, but I am supporting her again for mayor. I voted on Monday just just in case something happens to me between now and Election Day. My vote is going to be <laughs> counted. That's how serious I am about it. You, even if like I, I, I'm serious, Egberto, I mean. Some people don't understand that. They put it off like, well, I could do it tomorrow. But when it comes to voting, I feel like there is no tomorrow. Why not do it today? You know, I so, hear you. I hear you. I hear you. My, my wife went out to vote today and I'm going to be going out to vote either tomorrow or the day after. And I tell you something, uh, I, I, am, I have a 13 minute piece here to play about uh, Sheila, uh, uh, Sheila Jackson. Hey, I got another call. I, I, I haven't gotten two calls in a row like this. So stay with me. Let me see how it works. I finally get a chance. To do I'll it. Be here. All right. May I help you? Go ahead. Uh, this is politics and right. Come on in. All right. I see nobody's going to answer that one. So let's go back. Are you still there, uh, Ray? Okay, Ray, are you still there? Well, uh, this is the first time that we had two calls that one went on top of the other. And I wanted to see if I could get to uh, how, how we handle that. Uh, I don't see it right now. Ray, if you can hear me, I can't hear you. Or if you're no longer on, maybe you are. <laughs> they'll call back. Maybe Let, let's see what happens. OK, Ray, let me know if, if, if you hung up or did I did the hold not work? Anyhow. Um, so, yeah, on the screen, Robert Costa says, important to note. Johnson was deeply involved in efforts to keep Trump in power starting immediately after the 2020 election, early November 2020. I know because I spent months reporting on that period, and he was part of letters and behind scenes efforts with key outside groups. All right, I'm back here with you, uh, Ray. Uh, did I hang up on you or did you hang up? How did that go? So, um, yeah, I went into hold and then it just hung up. So um, okay. still working yeah. that out. I, I never got back. You never got back to me. OK, great. I thought I did. But anyhow, you know how that goes. But but yeah. but uh, uh, Robert Costas, I was reading about Robert Costas. I've talked with key sources that time about how Johnson, then all but unknown, worked with allied Trump groups and conservative leaders in a coordinated way to make sure that whole orbit was working together to help Trump more soon oh my god 
what's going to come out on the speaker is going to show that he is also a part of the insurrectionist. So we've also elected an insurrectionist oh as the speaker. Think about that. I want everybody to think about that. The Speaker of the United States Congress is now an insurrectionist. Anyway, anything else you want to add to the discussion uh, before we play that uh, th- that piece? Uh, no, I mean, uh, I-, I also say I support Amanda Edwards, who yes. is actually trying to take her old district for right. the uh, 18, I believe. or, or I-, I don't know if it's still yes. 18, but yeah, I'm... Yeah, I'm supporting them. Now, Amanda Edwards is running and for Sheila Jackson's current, Sheila Jackson Lee's current position. And that election doesn't occur right. until next year. But here's the thing. I am concerned that if Sheila does not win the mayor election, if she's going to jump back into that congressional district or not, I think she shouldn't. I think she should move on at that point if that occurs, because uh, Amanda Edwards is going to be a hell of a representative for that district. I agree. Well, I'm going to let you get on to your video and I'm going to keep on watching uh, and enjoying this beautiful Louisiana weather while I'm out here. And uh, you stay safe and healthy, Egberto. Thank you, my brother. And, and uh, you and be safe out there in Louisiana. Thank you, my brother. Have a great day. All right. Uh, from my from let's see from Paul Fleming says Katie Porter said this today is you can find the video. House Republicans have worked for decades to turn the IRS into a boogeyman. But clearly they just don't want government to function for the American people. Look at their inability to elect a speaker. Congress should help the IRS work better, not slash it a bit. I agree 100 percent. Uh, um, did I miss anything? Of it? Let's see. Bree says, who is Johnson? We are taking about talking about a congressman who spearheaded the efforts to overturn the 2020 election. I read that about it uh, as well. All right. What else have I got here? OK, let me tell you what I'm going to play now, folks. This morning on my show, it's a piece from my show this morning. We had callers who were pretty much attacking. They were pretty much attacking. Sheila Jackson Lee because of a tape that emerged that said where she kind of talked down one of her employees. Not a nice thing to do, something she does or something she did. But interestingly, men do it all of the times. I don't want a double standard here, but I am supporting this particular woman because of policy. But I want you guys to hear what the show at KPFT sounded like today, and then we'll take it back at the other side. Okay, check it out. Come on in, Bard. Welcome to Politics and Right. Hey, Bert. So I had a question for you. Y- yes, sir. Uh, Talk to me. So we all know that over the past 20 years, Sheila Jackson Lee has been a really bad boss. But yes. now we hear this, this conversation that she had with her staffer mm-hmm. that he recorded, and we find out that she is a true monster of a boss. Mm-hmm. And so my question to you was, and I haven't heard you talk about this. Are you going to, you and Melissa, are you going to change your vote now that you find out how bad she really is? Um, first of all, the Congresswoman is, I am going to come out. I, I shouldn't do this, but I will. I'm going to come out in the full defense of the Congresswoman. And uh, the Congresswoman is not a very nice boss, as I've seen and as I've known for for decades. And that is just how some people run the show. I'm not here to defend the Congresswoman for how uh, what kind of a boss she is when she gets upset or mad. I mean, people can look at that their way. I have had bosses all along my career, uh, mostly men. And they have done things, orders of magnitude worse than Sheila Jackson Weed, and they are well respected. I've watched the president talk about grabbing women by their you know what. I've watched a, a senator. I've watched all these things occur. I will not allow what uh, what others have done to release this tape. Look, first of all, I am not defending her at all. I'm not voting for her for how she treats this this person that she really uh, dragged out on at all. That's not what I'm judging her for. I'm judging her for what's best for Houston right now. For all of those who decide, you know, th- this stuff was came to manipulate your mind, Bard. 
And it, uh, this this tape was released to say, look at the bad thing the congresswoman did. Look at how she spoke to her employee. Let's now she cannot be the mayor of Houston. Have uh, there, listen to many others, likely including our brother Whitmire. You don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Often, I know what go on behind closed doors in a lot of different places, including places where I've worked. I've only worked for another company five years of my entire life. So what I'm saying. Voting, uh, not voting for uh, not voting for uh, for Sheila Jackson Lee. I'm going to tell this message to everybody who's listening to me. If you decide to not vote for Sheila Jackson Lee because of that one tape you heard of how she spoke to her employee. I can tell you stories about being with Sheila Jackson Lee in North Carolina and watching how she deals and, and conducts herself with her constituents. And I'm going to tell you something. More than anything else, I want somebody, that person that I saw, how she dealt with her constituents and how she ragged on her employee when they did not deal with the constituent appropriately. So, Bard, uh, that tape didn't tell me anything I couldn't have surmised. That tape will not change my vote. In fact, you're going to hear a piece that I, that I, a question that I asked Whitmer on PBS yesterday. And I'm going to play that a little bit later. Again, the best person, in my humble opinion, and that's who I'm voting for, based on what Houston needs, is a is a woman, and then likely because of the nurturing nature that that I, I I have in that. And for me, that person is going to be Sheila Jackson Lee. And, and nothing that it, the folks can try all the dirty politics they want. It's not going to work. Go ahead, Bard. Your turn. Well. Maybe it'll be good if she gets in there and starts trashing some of these city of Houston employees. Maybe it'll get uh, <laughs> I knew you would say, you, hey, Bard, Bard, Bard. You know, know, sitting around in the Bard, all day. Hold on, Bard, Bard, brother. Hold on a second. You know, I just knew. I just knew. I, I, there's something in my head that knew that's how you were going to come back, you know. <laughs> well, it's true. That was a good one, Bard. <laughs> Your vote. Uh, Bard, that was a good one. Hey, you get an A plus for that one, okay? Okay. I'll call Have you a good tomorrow. one. Have a good one, brother. All right, folks. 713 526 Hey guys, I only have one contribution so far. I need more. Let's go to Johnny. Come on in, Johnny. Bard, I hope you're listening. When you talk about leadership style and you want to bring up Sheila Jackson Lee, and I think it's because she's a black woman. Anyway. Uh, how about Franklin Delano Roosevelt and Lyndon Baines Johnson? And there's a third person whose name I shall not reveal just yet. Uh, FDR had a leadership style that was very aggressive, even though he had to get out of his wheel, out of his uh, crutches to do it. So now what about Donald Trump? Donald Trump, he's never had a tantrum in the White House. He's never thrown plates over the fireplace with ketchup all over the wall. Please yes. don't. Preach to us about Sheila Jackson Lee. Quit examining the speck in other people's eye when you got a, g- a log. Hey, Johnny, your- thank you for bringing that up. Uh, let's go to Melissa. Mel- there you go. You're on Harry. now, Melissa. Good morning. Yes, I hear you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Houston. <laughs> okay, three things. Sheila Jackson Lee, black, strong, minority. Got to be tough. You can't be tough. You can't stand the heat. Get out the kitchen. Um, to the weather guy, sir. Okay, I don't believe it. I'm my conspiracy mind says CERN. So, and then the the, the and then the last thing, what else? What were you talking about? Free Palestinian. Yeah. Good night. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, thank you so kindly, and thank you for being prompt, my dear, beautiful Melissa. Let's jump to Jeff. Come on in, Jeff. Good morning. Egberto. Good morning, Jeff. How are you doing this morning, sir? I'm doing fine. Okay, we got to go uh, fast today because the calls keep coming. Thank you, my okay, brother. Okay. I was going to talk about corp- I was going to talk about corporate greed. will never agree with the. Uh, I'm a stockholder in companies, and uh, I like my I like my dividends. But we're not going to talk about that. Uh, Sheila Jackson Lee. I have a friend of mine that works in the restaurant business. He waited on them and their table one time, and. The aide came up to him. First thing he said was, "You don't talk to the you don't talk to the congressman. You talk through me." And my buddy said, "No, I'm going to ask her for an order." And they and the aide said, "Well, no, we don't do that. She doesn't talk to you guys. She is a she is a egotistical, 
narcissist person that you'll ever meet. And okay, let me uh, let, okay, let me stop you right there. Let me stop Johnny you right there. Up, uh, Johnny brought up Jeff, Johnny Jeff, brought Jeff. Up, you know, about all the past. But you know what, Johnny? Stop living in the past. Let's talk about what's going on. Okay, now. Jeff, Jeff, I don't have a lot of time, but I want to tell you this, okay? I want because I don't want to leave that unanswered. Like I said, I know the congresswoman personally. You have to be careful about what all all the people say about her and all of that kind of stuff. You could likely say that about any man that's out there. It's not true. I can tell you one thing about how she treats her constituents, okay? But that's fine. I understand that there's a reason. It's easy. It's easy. It's very easy to put a hurting on women specifically, black women specifically. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, open your eyes, my brother, and try to look at things objectively. And let's think about what policies would get executed. But we talk another time when we have more time, Jeff. Thank you for calling. Let's go to Samantha. Come on in, Samantha. Uh, hi, Amberto. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm to make. I just want to see if I can make my point. Yeah, I'll, I'll make it brief. Uh, one thing that I noticed uh, that was happening in the elections is basically where, you know, the January 6th incident occurred and uh, that they claimed that the election was stolen uh, is because, you know, a lot of pe people who are Democrats, who are liberals, progressives, third party, they don't they don't talk about politics as much as the Republicans do. That's why I think Sheila Jackson is going to win because, you know, people already know who they're going to vote for. The Democrats know that we're going to vote for Sheila Jackson well, Lane. We already but what, she's the one. But, uh, she, Samantha, she's Samantha, race, Samantha, she's, I need uh, to interrupt Wimmer, you. So, uh -huh. I need to interrupt you because we need to get out of here. But here's the deal, Samantha. It's not enough to just say she's going to win. If you want her to win, you make sure your auntie, your granny, your child, your granddaughter, your mother, all of these folks are going to go out there and vote. Thinking she's going to win because she should win is one thing. Going out there and doing the work is what they are doing. Um, those people who want others to win, they're doing the work. Folks, uh, uh, the folks who want progressives to win have to start doing a bit more work. That's all I need to say, my dear Samantha. Thank you. You have a wonderful day. Let's go to Derek. Come on in, Derek. Hey, quickly. Uh, the uh, If you're trying to do your pledge online, it, it's not going through, Alberto. I tried, so I'm going to have to call it in. But what I want to say quickly is, these hypocrites act, act as though they have never had to get into somebody's behind for messing up. All this is is a political trick to paint the picture of the angry black woman. That's what it is. OK, Derek, I agree with you like 100 percent. It's something my wife said. It's something my daughter said. It's something my white Jewish friend called me up when it came out and said it is something. My, I mean, it is something that we those that are true progressive, those that believe in honesty, morality and are anti-racist. They all they understand what's going on here. What buttons usually gets pushed. It's like at, right at the right time you you get people to to vote their fears instead of vote their interests. And this happens. Thank you for saying that, Derek. Please call back and hit number one to contribute so I can thank you on ear. Well, I can thank you right now before you even give, but please go ahead. Thank you for the support that you're going to give the show when you call back 713-526-5738 and hit option number one. Thank you, Derek. Okay, thank you. All right, let's go to Brian. Come on in, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first off, Sheila Jackson Lee has had 11 chiefs of staff in the last 11 years. That should tell you something right there. OK, if stop right there. OK, whoa, 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 whoa. stop right there. Uh, stop right well, there. We won't take treat the voters. Wait, you wait, get what you vote for. Oh, stop. Stop. My, I want to ask you one thing. You said in in 11 in, in these years that she has worked, she had 11 chiefs of staff. President Trump was in office for four years. How many chief of staffs did he have, sir? You're living in the past. Talk about no, right no, 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 no. You're living in the past. If you just Seven. you just lived in you Seven. just lived in the past, sir. Seven. When you spoke about Sheila Jackson Lee. Seven. When did this the interview take place? If she's going to treat the, her staff this way, how is she going to treat the voters? Again, I, I gave you, I, I, I gave you, I gave you, sir. I gave you my experience in North Carolina. How she got on her staff because of how they treated their her constituents who was out there in North Carolina for the Democratic Convention. I just told you I witnessed that with my own eyes. You are saying what you're hearing through okay. third parties. No, I work in a very, very rough atmosphere. If 
HR gets a hold of something like that, that woman's fired. If a man well, talks to another man like that, he gets his butt whipped, buddy. And you know you what, know, sir? Like, that is not true. I'm telling you, and if you worked in I've seen, environments. I've seen, I've seen this fight for less than half of what she said to a, to a man. Brian, let's speak <laughs> one at a time. Brian, let me tell you, you ask any American worker out there about how bosses have treated them. It makes your statement false. It may be written that that is how things should happen. In the reality is it doesn't happen that way. I remember working at Daniel Industries and my wife would call me periodically about how this particular person treated and demeaned women in the office day after day. And he was one of the most respected people in the company. So Brian, I mean, don't judge uh, uh, Sheila Jackson Lee differently than you would judge uh, uh, Joe Biden, different than you would judge Donald Trump. If you can support a Donald Trump, supporting a Sheila Jackson Lee is peanuts because Donald Trump has exponential, has exponentially higher disregard for people than anything you can come about with a Sheila Jackson Lee or most human beings, to put it bluntly. So, Brian, let's be let's be measured not, here not, and not, be not, honest. Not, not. We let's be measured and be honest. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So, okay, let's see what else we got here. Ah, uh, para ver, para ver, para ver, para ver, para ver. Breach says, I don't understand why we listen to Texas internal news. Breach, this is not only Texas news, made national news. Uh, how she spoke to the um to to some of the folks that work for her, made national news. Okay, let's see what else we got now. I got another video to show you. This one is uh, with regards, guess what happened to brother Trump today? Donald Trump stormed out of the courtroom, went and spoke to reporters, and he addressed the judge as being a partisan and including the person sitting next to the judge. But the person sitting next to the judge was the secretary or the, the record, record, reporter, recorder. And remember, the judge told Trump he cannot address the recorder. So when he came back into the room, the judge said, Hey! Trump, get your yellow-haired butt to the stand. And the ex-president of the United States was ordered by a lowly judge that he had to obey and go to the stand. When he went to the stand, the judge said, who are you talking about, dude? And the Presidente de los Estados Unidos, the President of the United States, said, Oh, Judge, I meant Cohen. I meant Michael Cohen. I didn't mean just like, get your butt off the stage. $10,000 fine. You know? And a lot of people say, Ah, that's just a little bit fine for Donald Trump. $10,000 is nothing for Donald Trump. Why are you going to let Donald Trump pay $10,000? Well, hey, secret. Donald Trump is broke. He's not really a billionaire and all his assets are probably not real. You know, bankers probably own it all. But anyhow, so I understand. I hadn't fe seen the whole story, but I understand that after he sat down and the, his, 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 um, his lawyer asked the judge to stop the case right there and give a judgment. And the judge said, denied. Trump got up and stormed out of court. And then my show started, so I couldn't figure out where we were at. But here is how MSNBC reported it. I want to play it for you because I thought it was kind of funny. Let's go. I think this is it here. We have breaking news that the former president, Donald Trump, has just been fined $10,000 by the judge in his New York City fraud trial. NBC's Dasha Burns is at the New York courthouse. What an extraordinary moment it must have been, my understanding, is Donald Trump took the stand today. What happened? 
Yeah, Chris, that's exactly right. Quite a dramatic last 15, 30 minutes or so inside this courthouse here. The subject of uh, the the testimony from Donald Trump, he only took the stand for about a minute or so. But during one of the breaks earlier today, when Trump was talking to reporters, he said this, and I'm just going to quote him directly. He said, quote, a partisan judge with a person who's very partisan sitting alongside him, perhaps even much more partisan than he is. The person sitting next to the judge is his clerk. Former President Trump initially got in trouble. He got the gag order placed on him after he posted a disparaging post about that very clerk. So when this message, when this quote got back to the judge, he was very upset and considered uh, c- considered uh, sanctioning Trump about this. When they got back into the courtroom, at one point he asked Trump to, in fact, take the stand. He asked Trump who he was referring to. Trump said that he was referring to him, the judge and to Michael Cohen. After some back and forth questioning the former president, the judge ultimately determined that Trump was, quote, not credible in his testimony and decided to fine him $10,000. He believed that Trump was, in fact, referring to the clerk. He told him, don't do it again or it will be much worse, Chris. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, Danny Savalas is with us as, as well. In fact, his attorney, Chris Keis, said there's no evidence to the contrary. He asked the judge to reconsider. Obviously, the judge said this is bogus, what he tried to say. But look, he was fined $5,000. He was told to stop it. Now he's been fined $10,000. Where does that leave Donald Trump? Where does that leave the judge? Sanctions follow a continuum. They normally start with an admonishment, then they go to monetary fines, and eventually at the end of the road is imprisonment. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join. Absolutely so, folks. Please join our PDR Posse. And if you are on right now, feel free to give us those super chats, super chats, etc. Because you know what? We need we need to keep doing what we're doing and it's going to be even rougher come 2024 folks please remember support the program at politicsandright.com slash support anyway going back to the the screen let's see michael rodney let's see what else we got here what else we got here what else have we got here see what else i need to read uh para ver para ver lee grant says rodney we don't want bat- book bands we just don't want porn in third grade And you see, that is what gets to me, uh, Lee Grant. There's no porn in third grade. All right. Uh, It's a figment of the imagination of parents who want to do crap. Okay. Now, look, do you want your your kids to read Shakespeare? That is the kind of stuff that that a third grader to read Shakespeare. Well, guess what? Guess what? There could be certain things in Shakespeare. And by the way, I'm not a Shakespeare guy. I'm not one of those literature guys, okay? I'm kind of dumb when it comes to literature. But I do know a little bit about uh, Rom- uh, Romeo and Juliet, right? Porn. Based on what, what these right-wingers want to call porn, they'll be porn. Hell. Violence and, and all these other things. The Bible. Do you think they will ever, do you think a right winger would ever say, let's uh, remove the Bible from the library? You know what a, you know what a guy did? I don't remember where it is. I saw it on TikTok. He went to a school board meeting and he read through certain passages of the Bible and people were objecting to, we don't want our kids to hear that or something to that effect. And then he said, guess where these words came out of? Where again? The Bible. The Bible. You see, you got to be careful with what you're asking for, because you know what? Parents know what they want their kids to do. I don't want 
a kid, a third grader doing porn. We don't want that. And that's not what we do. But when let when we look at the left and the right, the ones that people need to fear are, you know whom? Looks like Ray's calling me. Ray, talk to me, my brother. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. All right. So uh, two things uh, with respect to Sheila Jackson Lee's bad boss behavior. Yes. You did it. You did the right thing and called him out. I'm sure Donald Trump and a lot of these other Republican um, representatives are not the best bosses. So they, as as the, as we said in the hood, you can miss me with that. OK. Second of all, this thing about Donald Trump acting a fool in, in court, all I say, keep on talking. You're going to talk to yourself right behind bars. Keep on talking because you know what? That's, the, that, that's Donald Trump's biggest weakness. He can't shut his mouth and he wants to hide behind all his legal trouble, hide behind his lawyers. You know, you know there is a right to remain silent, but I just have a feeling that he's not going to exercise that right because his ego won't allow him to. I agree 100 percent. I agree 100 percent, Ray. You got you nailed it. You nailed it, brother. That's all and I got to say. I'm going to keep looking. All right. Hey, hey, thank you for calling in. And hey, folks, just like Ray, I love Ray because Ray is doing to our program sort of what happens in the mornings at uh, at KPFT. And let me tell you something. For those of you who don't want the telephone stuff because you think it may take too much time out of the program, if if our if we started to get more activity on the phone, I would probably extend the program uh, ex- extend the program so that we can have more conversation when it needs to be, not every time when it needs to be. So I love taking calls and I, I, I need to figure out a way that I can handle the multiple calls. We haven't gotten a chance to play around with that much. Bruce says, when shall we all meet again in thunder, lightning or in rain? Hey, Lee. Hey, Bruce, we need to go get some coffee. I haven't seen you in a while, brother. We need to go hang out and get some coffee sometime soon, uh, pretty soon, and just sit down and chat. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Mike, uh, Paul Fleming says, Mike Johnson is Jim Jordan with a sport coat and better here. I love that. I love that, Paul Fleming. I love that. Paul Fleming also says, the city of Orlando is moving forward with plans to create a memorial on the property of the Pulse nightclub where 49 people were massacred seven years ago. A good move. Uh, the right people never call. I don't know why they never call. Come on, people on the right, give us a call. You know, we love you too. Well, you know that you're here every day. So, you know, we love you. It's obvious that Michael Rudman is completely clueless on all the porn and LGBT books that have been stocked at public elementary schools. Parents are reading examples of these books at school board meetings and are shut down because of being too graphic. Look, brother, I know you want to. You would. You, I, look, let me tell you better. Oh, Bruce, uh, let's talk after the show. Uh, Listen to me, Mike. I I know you genuinely believe that, okay? I know you believe that, but it's not true. It is not true, especially com- compared to the number of books that are in any particular library, okay? Please, please. When it comes to who our children should fear, it's not people on the left. Uh, I I played the video that showed the people that are being arrested for molesting kids and sexually uh, sexual ill behavior with kids I've, I've shown the video it's mostly on the right pastors uh family members that's where it comes from remember i talked to you about projection 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 come on now all right let's see michael Cisak says go ahead and clue me in find a book that was banned from elementary and include the passages that you find offensive. that's the thing they do a lot of talking but they can never show the actual product. All right. Brit says, I'm gay. Many people are. It's good to know that uh, there are others out there and stop committing suicide. Agreed. Live and let live. Paul Fleming says, President Biden wants three plans from Israel before it invades Gaza. One, post-inversion governance. Two, civilian harm reduction. And three, how to free hostages 
While the U.S. and Israel say Israel isn't waiting on green light from Washington to launch a ground offensive, one official noted that U.S. would give an implicit thumbs up whenever the three requests have been satisfied, uh, satisfactory fulfilled. Look, uh, Israel cannot, l- l- let's put it bluntly, okay? And to my Israeli brothers and sisters, this is a political thing. This has nothing to do specifically with, with, with you. But Israel cannot exist without the United States defending and offering what it offers to Israel. It's an impossibility. Uh, so whenever you hear Israel say, we'll do as we please, no, you'll do as America said. Now, uh, uh, whether you like it or not, if America honestly doesn't want you to do something, and by America, I mean all of American government, you just won't do it. And if you do it, you'll likely suffer the consequences from doing that. Uh, Egberto, read the message I sent uh, you in the new, uh, from the new in Ireland regarding Palestine. Oh, God, you're going to send me up to search for something. Let's see. Let's see if I can find it. It, it, Where is it, Bridge? Let's see. I kind of searched, but I'm kind of at a disadvantage with all these things flowing, girl. But because it's you, I must try to find it. Uh, Let's see if I can find it. Okay. I I don't see it, Bridge. I don't see it. You got to help me out there. You got to send it again on the chat because I don't see it. So send it again on the chat, my dear, beautiful uh, bridge. Oops, I'm getting some messages here that I've got to look at. Okay. All right. Bridge, I don't know what you're talking about, so send it again, girl. Uh, uh, oh, FB message. Okay, I'll look at it then. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Michael Red says, Anti-Defamation League lives off TikTok is a popular anti-LGBTQ Twitter account operated by former real estate agent Chaya Raichik. The account, which was over 1.3 million followers in August 2022, attempts to generate outrage and stroke anti-LGBTQ hostility by reposting selected out of context social media content created by LGBTQ people and liberals. If the individual's event and organizations targeted by the account are frequent targets of harassment, threats, and violence. Thank you for providing that info. All right, what what else have we got here? Uh, Maywood says, I'm freezing. Jay Ray from, from uh, Third Ward says, and a lot of Trump supporters are willing to dismiss the fact that he said that he grabs women by their privates, and I've, I've seen video footage of him sneaking provocatively about a nine-year-old girl. If you think that's bad, He actually spoke provocatively about his own daughter on the show on The View. So, again, this guy is just a pedo kind of guy, a pedo kind of guy. I'm going to put that on the screen now that you've, uh, well, let's see if I can get it there. First of all, where is it? Uh, Where is the thing that she just brought us? Let me see where it is. All right. I'll put it there. All right, let's see. Uh, Palestine, you are not alone. We are all Palestinians. Now, that is uh, from uh, from uh, Ireland. Okay, folks, that's the article that Bridge put on the screen. Let me put it on the screen for everybody to see. All right, thank you, Bridge. All right, going back to the chat. Going back to the chat. Going back to the chat. Uh, Michael Ronis said, it's amazing that conservatives constantly can't distinguish reputable sources from known propagandists. They get lied to on a regular and swallow the lies wholeheartedly. Yeah, they do. But, you know, every now and then somebody changes. Uh, somebody changes every so often. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, the other video that I have is just too long. It's 20 minutes long. It was another piece that I did on the strike. And it's 19 minutes long, and we only have about six minutes left, five minutes left, so I can't play that. Doesn't matter. You can always go to our blog for the show, which goes up in a little bit, uh, to check it out. Uh, But uh, we're going to play that then. Uh, Thanks. Read it when you can, Egberto Willis. I will read it, Bridge. You know, I, I, I read all the good stuff my great people send me. 
Uh, Sidon is people, Mike, not government. There you go. I'm glad you made that distinction, Bridge. A lot of people don't quite get it. Michael Ren says, media bias check. Overall, we rate lives of TikTok as extreme right biased and questionable source based on promotion of right wing propaganda, conspiracy theories, pseudoscience, lack of transparency, numerous fail fact checks and citations by anti hate organizations. Please, folks, you have to be careful. The right is always trying to fool you into voting against your own interests, into hating others. Don't fall for it. All of you folks are too good to, to, to fall for that kind of stuff, okay? Let's not fall for it. All right. Michael Dennis says, that's the thing about conservatives. They're extremely, uh, extremely slow to change. Unless if you feed into their biases, then they welcome it. This is why you see so many conservatives falling into becoming hateful, horrible people. Uh, Flaw Fleming says, when Fox News host Brett Baer listed his DC mansion for an eye-puffing 30, what? 31.9 million last week, some eagle-eyed observers noticed a surprising feature. Dozens of solar panel covered parts of the roof. The, this comes as Bear, who hosts highest rated cable news program in its time slot, has used his platform to amplify criticism of action on climate change, including the adaption of solar and other clean energy sources. But wait, Paul. His house is being sold for $31.9 million. What is Fox News paying this guy? And to do what? Now, you see, when we talk about uh, wealth and income disparity, what we're talking about, where uh, a, a capitalism is supposed to be the efficient allocation of resources. What does Brett Barr produce? Why is it, why is it efficient? Why is capital efficiently allocated? How is capital efficiently allocated to somebody who does little to make society or build anything for society? Amazing. Amazing. Finally, Michael Rudden can't give medicine to the dead. <laughs> anyway, wait, folks, we're getting close to the end of the program. And I want to thank all of you for being here, my lefties, my righties, and everybody else, everybody in between. I couldn't do this program at all without you. And what I want to ask all of you that are on the program right now to please consider being uh, sustainers by going to uh, becoming a part of our Patreon, by becoming, becoming a part of our, our, our PDR Posse, by logging into, uh, by going on to YouTube and becoming a subscriber. We are, we have many subscription options, whether it's be YouTube, Facebook, Patreon, uh, and, and, all, and all of these. We can't do this without you. We, unlike a network that just throws the commercials at you, and the, the businesses pay them to misinform you. We ask you to support the program that informs you. So please consider going to politicsunright.com slash support. I put the link in the chat, politicsunright.com slash support. And choose whatever manner you can find to support this program. We cannot do it without you. One of these days, I figure an angel is going to see a rich Angel is going to see this program and say, Egberto, Politics Done Right, and the PDR Posse are doing so well for society that we're going to go ahead and give a big contribution to the program. Well, just go to politicsandright.com slash support if you have it, if you have the wherewithal to do that, please do. Thank you so kindly, Bridge MCP, for your support. Bridge just sent us a super chat. Thank you. Anybody else want to join Breach for a super chat? We'd love you to do that. But go to politicsandright.com to support. And that has many ways to support us, including on uh, Patreon, YouTube, Facebook. We all have subscription models on those different platforms. The ones that's best as well, you can go to our PayPal, politicsandright.com slash PayPal. But all of that is inside of the support link. But also, I would love uh, as many as you who can. To give Politics Done Right a coffee a month, how would you do that? Subscribe to our newsletter. Our newsletter goes out every day at five in the mornings and sometimes a bit more if we have some additional information to give you. And to get there, you go to politicsandright.com slash newsletter, politicsandright.com slash newsletter. 
And if you do that, if you do that, uh, it it helps us defray all of our costs. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, like you know, before I went whole hog over ten years ago into doing this stuff full time, I decided that I was making the change. I have always told folks, somebody need to do this, somebody need to do that, etc. I looked in the mirror and said, I'm going to do it. And at the time. The website was pulling enough so that after reducing my cost to a very small amount, that I could do it. I could do the website with the ads on the website, etc., and everything worked fine. But in one day, we lost 90% of our income. And I mean that 90% because Google and Facebook changed your algorithm. And from then, we had to develop some sort of a subscription model, a subscription and a donation model to keep this stuff going. And that's where we started with Patreon and the subscription on Facebook, the subscriptions on YouTube. Uh, we, I have been draining my, you know, what, what I had as a retirement account to keep this stuff going. And that's what we continue to do. We're still not yet positive uh, cash flow with this, with this platform. Still not. It's, it's a difficult business to be in. So I ask you so kindly, as best as you can, Support us because we don't have much more to go before we have to say, I don't know if I can keep doing that because I'm almost, I'm, I'm approaching now. Uh, the, the, the zeros are starting to look like I'm going to zero and social security is not going to be enough. So um, please consider supporting these kinds of programs, not only mine, but others that are doing this good work. Remember, we don't do this to try to get rich because we don't. We can't. That's why I have several, I, I write books, write blogs, uh, uh, create podcasts, all these different things to, uh, to, first of all, get the progressive message out. But secondly, as well, with the expectation that you can get a penny there, a penny there or not. But the best model is if we can get our sustaining subscribers. So please consider going to politicsandright.com slash support politicsandright.com slash support. I'm going to put it in the feed one more time, politicsandright.com slash support, and choose a method to support what we do here. As well, please consider subscribing to our newsletter. It's minimal cost. If we can get hundreds, it would do well. Uh, minimal cost. So go to politicsandright.com slash newsletter, politicsandright.com slash newsletter. Become a paid subscriber. It'll help us continue to do this and it'll, it'll show that yes, it is something that we can do. Look, my name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. And you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Oh! We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.